Hi everybody, Jacob Reed here from ReviewEcon.com. So the 2025 macroeconomics exams were just released. Uh, I'm about to go through them and uh, let you know what I think my uh, and my what I think the answers are. Uh, just be aware I, I don't uh, know what the rubrics are officially going to say, so I'm making some guesses here. Uh, sometimes they raise the bar and make a question harder. Sometimes they lower the bar, make a question a little easier. Uh, but these are what I think will be accepted on this year's exam. Uh, let me know in the comments what you think. Uh, before we get started, I want to let everybody know that I really appreciate your support of ReviewEcon.com and for uh, you watching the videos, buying the review booklets. If you haven't already done so, I'd appreciate it if you subscribed and gave this uh, video a, a like and uh, and share it with somebody, help me out with the algorithm. Uh, let me know what you think about my answers in the comments below, and I hope it worked out well for everybody. Um, uh, let's go ahead and, oh, before we get started, I want to make sure I give a shout out to my wife. It is Mother's Day. We do have children and she's allowing me to do this video, uh, so I appreciate it. All right, let's go ahead and jump into the questions and the answers, or at least what I think are the answers. Uh, all right, so uh, first of all, we have uh, Vortania is, uh, is a country that's in long run equilibrium. We're going to start off by drawing a long run and short run Phillips curve for this economy, and we're going to show that long run equilibrium with a point labeled P. All right, there's my answer there. We have our downward sloping SRPC, a vertical long run Phillips curve. Natural rate of unemployment is down below that. I don't think you're gonna need the expected inflation rate there, but I believe as long as you have, uh, also you'll need that Y axis labeled inflation rate. And I believe if you have that P at the intersection, that'll get you the two points I expect here. All right, moving on to part B. Uh, it says to assume that new residential construction projects are being implemented for Vortania. Uh, will the real output in Vortania increase, decrease, or remain the same in the short run? And we have to explain. So residential construction is considered gross investment. So that's what my answer is based on here. And real output here, the key or the breadcrumb, the real output breadcrumb uh, tells us that we should be thinking about the ASAD model. So there's my answer there increase because the residential construction projects increase gross investment, which shift the AD to the right, resulting in a higher equilibrium real output. All right, moving on to the next part for part B double I, assume no change in inflationary expectations on the graph we already drew, that Phillips curve graph. We have to show the short run effect of, the, of new residential construction projects on this economy, and we have to label the new uh, short run equilibrium as S. So we're going to, uh, we would have seen a rightward shift of AD in the ASAD model. So uh, that means we're going to have higher in uh, inflation and lower unemployment. So let's go ahead and put that here, uh, right there. I think a point labeled S that's just higher on the uh, short run Phillips curve and to the, uh, to the left there will get you that point. Just label it S. I don't think you'll have to bring it to the axes as I did here, but uh, I think it's just a good habit to do it. So that's why I got it there. All right, uh, moving on to part C. Now we are into the foreign exchange market. Vortania and Rodera, Rodara, I don't know, <laughs> are trading partners with flexible exchange rates. The currency of Vortania is the v Vortanian crown, VTC, and the currency of Rodara is uh, the Rodaran mark, uh, and that's RHM. So assume that Vortania's capital and financial account balance is zero, uh, and then uh, Vortania is going to be an imposing tariff. So you need to know that a tariff is a trade barrier. It's going to decrease trade with other countries. Uh, specifically, this is going to prevent imports, or it's going to decrease imports from Rodera into uh, Vortania. We're going to draw a correctly labeled graph of the foreign exchange market for the Vortanian crown and show the effect of the tariffs on the supply. So they actually specified which curve you should shift. So that means if you shifted the demand curve, definitely not getting a point here, uh, or at least I, I think the shift will be a second point. The drawing of the Forex market will be the first point. Uh, and so let's go ahead and do that. There we go. Uh, on the Y axis, we have the RHM slash uh, VTC. Down on the bottom, we have the quantity of VTC and we see a leftward shift. That's because uh, in Vortania, they're going to be importing less. That means uh, they will be selling fewer of their uh, uh, units of currency and that will decrease the supply of their currency, causing the equilibrium exchange rate to increase. All right, moving on to the next part for part D. Based solely on the international value of the Vortanian crown shown in part A, which remember we saw an appreciation, will uh, Victoria, uh, Vortania's uh, net exports increase, decrease, or remain uh, the same in the short run? So we have to remember that with the appreciation of the currency, that's going to make foreign products 
relatively cheaper and it will make uh, um, this country's exports more expensive for consumers or relatively more expensive. So that leads us to the answer here of decrease because the net exports will decrease thanks to the uh, increase in imports and decrease in exports solely based on the exchange rate we just saw. All right, moving on to part E. Based on the uh, change in net exports that we just saw and identified in part D, what will happen to each of the following in the short run? The capital and financial account in Vortania, and this time we have to explain. Now remember, there's a lot of questions in uh, both of these sets where your answers are based on previous answers. Uh, you're probably going to be eligible for some uh, consistency points here. So if you made a mistake early on, uh, as long as your answers are consistent with that mistake, I think you're still going to get the point. All right, so the capital financial account balance uh, in Vortania, we have to explain. Here we go, here's my answer. Increase or move into a surplus because it was balanced before. And that's because the decrease in net exports will cause a decrease in the current account. And since the capital and financial account plus the current account equals zero, that means in order to keep them balanced, there will be a financial capital inflow. So we need to see a positive amount coming into that uh, financial and capital account. All right, on to part E double I. What's going to happen to employment in Vortania? And that's based on the change in net exports. Uh, and that's going to be decrease. Remember, we saw a decrease in net exports. Um, and that means that that's going to be a leftward shift of aggregate demand causing lower real output, which correlates to lower employment. All right, on to part F. Uh, we have, we're going to assume that the central bank wants to return the uh, Victorian crown to its international value before the imposition of tariffs. Uh, so would the central bank uh, buy or sell Vertanian crowns in the foreign exchange market? And we have to explain. Now remember earlier on, we saw that the currency uh, uh, appreciated. So now we need it to depreciate this time. So that's going to be sell the currency because uh, that will increase the supply of the VTC, which will cause the currency to depreciate and return to the previous value. All right, moving on, we're on to part two or question number two. Uh, now we have two countries. We have country L and country A. They are both in short run equilibrium and their output levels for both of these countries are below full employment. That means they are in recessionary gaps. Both countries use a monetary policy, but country L has limited reserves. Country A has uh, ample reserves. First of all, for country L, which has limited reserves, uh, what uh, open market operation could the central bank use? Remember, open op market operations is just two things. It's buying bonds or selling bonds. So you pick one. In this case, uh, since they have a recessionary gap, they want to make the economy bigger. So they're going to buy bonds. All right. That will increase the money supply, decrease the interest rate, and cause an increase in gross investment, which shifts AD to the right, restoring full employment. Over on, the, uh, on part B, now we are looking at country A, which has ample reserves. And uh, they are also trying to move the economy back to full employment. Uh, remember, ample reserves, we got two. Really, we have one policy tool, and that's interest on reserves. But there are two ways you could show it or say it, and that's either decrease interest on reserves or decrease administered rates. Either one of those answers, I think, will get you your point. Over on to part C, we have to draw the reserves market graph once again. We did that for the first time last year. And so here's one possibility. If you said that we are going to decrease uh, interest on reserves, you're going to shift that lower bound of the demand curve there, showing the lower policy rate. Make sure you have the quantity of reserves on the y-axis, policy rate on the at x-axis, and show that new equilibrium policy rate. If you, show, if you said that you were going to decrease administered rates, then you have to shift both the top and the bottom downward. All right, on to part D. We're going to assume that instead no policy actions are taken in country A and that the economy remains in short run equilibrium at a output below full employment. Will the short run aggregate supply curve in country A increase, decrease, or remain the same as the country adjusts to, uh, to the long run equilibrium? And we have to explain. Now remember, it's the short run aggregate supply curve that always brings us back to uh, full employment. And so that's going to be an increase of that short run aggregate supply curve. And that's because in the long run, wages and other input prices will decrease. And that's because there are high numbers of people who are unemployed. Eventually, they'll accept those lower wages. And that causes a rightward shift of that short run aggregate supply curve. All right, on to number three. Now we've got a table and we got some calculations we have to do. Uh, we have, uh, this is for middle land and we have quantities uh, that are the same. The quantities are the same for both 2021 and 2022, but we have different prices for 2021 and 2022 for uh, shirts, bread, and pants. 
The first question uh, we have to ask or answer is, uh, was the real GDP in 2021 in middle land greater than, less than, or equal to the nominal GDP in 2021? And we have to explain. So here's my answer there, equal to, and that is because the nominal and real are always equal in the base year, and, and that's because uh, base year prices and current year prices are equal. So there you go, that's for part A. On to part B, we're going to calculate the real GDP for middle land in 2022, and we have to show our work. Now remember, for, uh, for calculating real GDP, we use the current quantities, 2022's quantities are down there at the bottom of that table, but we're going to use 2021's prices to calculate real GDP because 2021 is the base year, so you use base year prices. So that's all my work, $11 times 50 units of, of shirts, $4 times 70 units of bread, and $12 times 30 units of, of, shirt, of pants, and then add them all together, that's $11,090. All right, and, you have, and make sure you show all that work to get this point. All right, over on to part C. We're going to assume that middle land uh, is in short run equilibrium in 2022, and that uh, potential real GDP output is actually $1,150 $1, in 2022. We're going to draw a correctly labeled graph of the aggregate demand, uh, and short run aggregate supply, long run aggregate supply, and we are going to do that for middle land in 2022 and show each of the following. We're just labeling it as appropriate. So here's my graph there. We have our downward sloping AD, upward sloping SRES. At the equilibrium point, we have Y1 and PL1, real GDP on the y uh, X axis and PL on the Y axis as well. And then that YF along with long run aggregate supply curve uh, are less than our Y1 output. That shows that we have a uh, an inflationary gap. Uh, and that's because our real GDP output currently, remember, was 1190 and our potential is 1150. So that potential is less. All right, on to part D. We're going to assume that the marginal propensity to consume in middle land is 0.8. We're going to calculate the minimum change and we have to state the direction of the change in government spending required to close the output gap in the short run in middle land and we have to show our work. So we got a little bit of work to do here. First of all, I have, have the calculated, uh, calculating the output gap of $40 and then I'm calculating the spending multiplier of five and then we take the amount of the output gap. It's a, it's, uh, we are currently have too much uh, uh, real GDP output of, by $40. We divide that by the five multiplier that gives us $8 um, and, but it's a decrease. So we're going to decrease spending by $8 to close that gap and reduce GDP by, uh, by 40 billion or up to 40 billion. And that's it, that's it. Those are the uh, answers to this one. Uh, I, again, I don't know for sure if those are all the answers. We'll see if I uh, got anything wrong when the rubrics come out. Uh, let me know how you did in the uh, comments down below. I hope everything went well, but whatever happens, remember your brilliance is not gonna be determined by the scores on this year's exam. Uh, you can still study economics if that's what you want to do, and you will learn it at, at some point, um, even beyond whatever the College Board determines. All right, thank you so much for all your support. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Take care. I'll see you all next time.